Okay, learning objective two, and the different types of budgets along with the components that make up the master budget or part of this discussion. So if we can begin with two different types of budgets, we have strategic and operating. Typically, a strategic budget, as your book says, is more of a long-term financial plan with long-term goals. So your strategic uh, budget, for example, might be, if this is 2016, you may hear of organizations that have a 2020 plan. You know, what are our goals that we want to obtain by the year 2020? So that would be considered a strategic budget. Others might have a 10-year or 20-year plan that they want to reach. So um, it usually covers a longer period of time, and it's usually not as detailed as an operating budget. Just overall, these are the goals of where our organization wants to be within the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Now, on the other hand, the operating budget is a little more specific. The operating budget, as your book says, is more of a short-term plan with short-term Term goals. This could be a weekly, um, monthly, quarterly, annual budget, but it's basically um, what do we need to do on a daily basis, day-to-day -day basis, to meet the um, strategic objectives of our organization and ultimately to get us to where our strategic budget wants us to be in the future. Okay, we can also look at a static budget versus a flexible budget, and the static budget simply covers, as your text says, one level of sales volume. So if I've predicted that I can sell 10,000 smart tablets, then what is my budget for those 10,000 tablets? On the other hand, a flexible budget is prepared to cover various levels of sales volume. So for example, let's say I budgeted to sell 10,000 smart tablets, but what happens if I only sell 8,000? Or if I sell more than 10, I sell 12,000. Well, obviously, if I've budgeted for 10, but I only sell 8, then my sales should be less, and my cost of sales should be less. If I sell, if I've budgeted for 10 and I sell 12,000 units, then I would expect my sales to be higher and my cost to be higher. So the flexible budget allows me to do uh, a comparison of actual to budget based on, it basically creates a new budget for the actual numbers that I have um, pr produced and sold in this particular period. Okay, so it's very useful for what if scenarios. Now the master budget is what we're going to focus on in the rest of this chapter and it is basically, it, it in the end we're going to come up with a budgeted set of financial statements for our organization but there have to be some supporting schedules to help us come up with these budgeted financial statements. So we're also going to have the capital expenditures budget which looks at um, what is our plan for if we're union, new dormitories, new buildings? What if we are Starbucks? What is our plan for um, new buildings, new equipment, or replacing equipment? So we have a budget for those long-term assets, property, plant, and equipment that we need to grow and expand our organization. Now, the financial budget is going to include the cash budget and the budgeted financial statements. So if you'll notice, these are all part of the master budget, but we need the capital expenditures budget, the cash budget, to, to um, actually be supporting schedules for us to make up, in the end, what we're going to look at as our master budget. So here's an illustration. In our master budget, if you'll notice, the first thing we have here is the operating budget. How many units do you think you can sell? Okay, sales are not always the same as production. We'll talk about that in the next objective. But how many units do you need to produce? And based on what you need to produce, we will determine the material, labor, and manufacturing overhead costs for that production. Once these products are sold, they'll move off the balance sheet to the income statement as cost of goods sold. And as you've seen in prior chapters, we have to be able to determine and estimate the amount um, or the cost of the merchandise that has been produced, what is the cost that moves to the income statement once those are sold? We will budget for selling and administrative expenses, those period expenses on the income statement. And so at this point, we've got the operations of our organization, but we need, and remember our operating budget was more short-term, daily basis, monthly basis. So complete your operating budget, but then we need to go to um, strategic budgeting. What are our capital expenditures? What are we planning to do long-term? 
because we're going to spend you know cash or incur debt to acquire these capital expenditures. So once we have our operating budget, our capital expenditures budget, then we can determine cash. Sales do not always equal cash because we have the accrual basis of accounting. I can sell things on credit, so I have sales and accounts receivable, not cash. Um, when, we're when we're purchasing materials, I may purchase them this month and pay for them next month. So I have cost of materials, but I haven't spent any cash. All right, so we have to determine a cash budget. Once we have operating, capital expenditures, cash, then we begin to pull the information from all three of these components into the budgeted financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. We'll see this as we move through the chapters. Okay, take a break, make some notes, and we'll come back and spend most of our time in how we prepare an operating budget for a manufacturing organization.